Welcome to On The Chain. Let me pull this up over here. This is from uh, Future Innovation Summit. This was posted, uh, Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasurer of the United States. Let me uh, make sure we're sharing the screen so we can get this. Let's go full screen. You guys should be able to hear this. Uh, audio should be loud enough. Looks like uh, maybe they're in uh, Dubai or Saudi. I'm not sure exactly where the uh, Future Innovation Summit was, maybe, but let's uh, let's play it. And specifically blockchain technology. And I want to start by saying I'm also on the board of Ripple, which is XRP, uh, cryptocurrency. But I want to make something very, very clear. Blockchain is here to stay. The train has left the station. You hear me quoted about that all the time. As far as I'm concerned, whether it's fractional real estate, whether it's art, whether it's NFTs, blockchain is not going away. So the question is, how do we take advantage of this? So, you know, already, you know, she starts out, you know, really strong. I think they're, you know, one of the things that is being referenced here, and this is the Innovation Summit. And so how important is it uh, to reference that? You know, that blockchain, you know, the cat's out of the bag. Blockchain is here to stay. Blockchain is going nowhere. You know, so that is, you know, really... uh really uh key here you know so you know that's you know blockchain uh regardless of what the sec is trying to do regardless of gary Gensler, regardless of many of the others uh that are trying to uh block the true development the true movement uh within this space you know she's 100 percent spot on you know blockchain is here to stay tom emmer there is a new day coming and it's right around the corner we're seeing it every single day uh, how critical uh, this is. And she's referencing, you know, in blockchain, you know, NFTs, uh, you know, the tokenization of uh, of real estate, of, uh, you know, of, of securities. There's so much uh, use within the traditional financial space for blockchain, for crypto, uh, not even referencing the fact that if we go into a fully decentralized environment, uh, we can hold our political representatives accountable uh, for their expenditures. We just saw this massive uh, inflation uh, bill that supposed uh, inflation bill that was going to cut inflation. But we know, you know, for a fact that the inflation bill will do the exact opposite. Uh, we're going to see inflation probably skyrocket, you know, further uh, due to this bill that they just passed. Um, it's going to have a, a further dampening effect on the economy, um, especially given the fact of the, you know, how they want to bolster uh, the Internal Revenue Service versus bolstering uh, the security and financial stability of the country. A at the same time, while we see, you know, pushback uh, from the current SEC uh, going after and targeting uh, blockchain companies and going after obviously the SEC v. Ripple case, which is uh, on the front line right now for all blockchain tech in the US. So, you know, one of the things she's referencing here and, and we'll keep going, but this, this to me, you know, that is a great, bold, you know, opening statement, you know, for us to focus on. So hang on. So it's important to recognize again, how the financial and investment landscape has changed specific to blockchain technology. You might have seen recently how President Biden has signed an executive order earlier this year to study digital assets over this next year. Now, I was honored to also be part of President Biden's Treasury Transition Team. In fact, I'm the only person in the world who's been on Obama's Treasury Transition Team, both terms of the Obama administration, and most recently, President Biden's Treasury Transition Team. I, call, I consider that a huge honor that I can serve my country in that way. So when President Biden signed this executive order to, to look at digital assets, we hope that the recommendations are going to accomplish several things. One, to encourage regulators to ensure sufficient oversight, to encourage the Financial Stability Oversight Council to identify and mitigate financial risk, to direct coordinated actions across agencies to mitigate illicit financing and national security risk, promote safe and affordable financial services, and finally, but not the last thing, surely, to explore a U.S. central bank digital currency. Uh, how this All right. So that's where 
you know, we can kind of, they, she kind of uh, left the reservation at that point. So, you know, talking about pursuing a central bank uh, digital currency. So now there, there are a couple of things that she said that I disagree with. There's a few things she said that she's saying that uh, I definitely agree with, especially in her opening statement, especially on the heels of, you know, what uh, Congressman Tom Emmer has referenced, which is a new day is coming. Now, you know, for her, obviously, you know, she has been, you know, in a very high uh, uh, political economic uh, uh, space. Uh, and, you know, so when she came, you know, out with her opening statement, a, a digital, you know, that the digital economy, blockchain, cryptocurrency, it's here to stay 100%. Um, the, the departure is really the focus on a central bank digital currency. And, you know, I, I just I disagree you know, with that notion, you know, now, so you have the U.S. government focused on the rollout of this uh, CBDC. Um, does that bring about uh, the innovation? Does that bring about economic stability? Does it bring about uh, freedom uh, of, you know, to the people? And there's obviously a lot of concern uh, with that. But one of the things that she had mentioned regarding this executive order, which also is a little bit uh, weak, uh, mainly because, you know, she's mentioning that they want to look at the agencies and what the agencies should be doing to enforce. Now, one of the, the biggest issues, you know, here is that, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest issues uh, that we have here is that it is Congress that writes laws. So Congress should be, you know, taking up the effort uh, to pass pro uh, positive uh, legislation that is pro crypto that will help advance uh, crypto and the innovation of cryptocurrency and uh, help uh, push uh, the innovation of uh, within blockchain tech, as she's mentioning in the beginning. Now, the executive order, does it do that? Um, I think it's just it's a little bit uh, too far fetched. You know, all you know, what, what, we, what we're seeing a lot within uh, the current uh, uh, administration, the current uh, Congress, the current uh, House, the current Senate. Um, we're starting, we're seeing kind of like a, a lackluster approach uh, to economic growth, uh, a lackluster approach to the development uh, within blockchain and, and the innovation of blockchain tech and crypto. And the executive order that was passed is also a little lackluster because it was pushing for the investigation uh, of. Now, there's already been motion, you know, through Congress. There was actually a bill that went through the, to the Senate that passed Congress saying the exact same thing. So in fact, you don't, you know, is the executive order, what exactly is it going to do? You know, what exactly have they done? Have they done anything uh, positive? Because we know that we've had multiple, multiple uh, bills that have been put in front of, you know, Congress that would push uh, for uh, further development within the crypto space. And it, it just, you know, didn't go anywhere. So an executive order also not going to do anything uh, further, but, uh, Forget about that because, you know, Tom Emmer, there are, you know, new people coming into Congress uh, come November uh, that will be voted in. Come January, we're going to see, you know, a major, major change, a uh, shift uh, in the focus uh, for economic growth uh, here in the U.S. Now, the U.S. Uh, really needs to take a leadership seat uh, in uh, crypto. And I don't know how many times, you know, we've, we kind of rehash, you know, the same ideas over and over and over again. But we're we're so close. At, <clears throat> we're so close at this point uh, that it, it's right there. I mean, now we can see it. So we've spent you know the past two years just kind of getting into this notion that they need to do something. But now you know, come November, this is the moment in time that everybody in the U.S. We have people all over the world, so they're looking at us. Well, like we're almost like a banana republic at this point. And they said, what in the world are you guys doing from a political perspective? But what are you doing from a cryptocurrency perspective? Why is it that your politicians are tripping over themselves uh, to try to undermine the growth of blockchain, undermine the growth of cryptocurrency in the U.S. to a detrimental effect on a global scale? Now, we know that XRP and uh, Bitcoin and all the other assets out there are global in nature uh, in nature you know it's just really really uh amazing you know how how fast 
uh, we're seeing the crypto and the blockchain space <laughs> expand uh, exponentially on a global scale. And there are so many uh, countries out there that can, uh, can, can adopt uh, and join into this growth. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.